In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is my joy to welcome each of you who are viewing right now to devote time reading and pondering upon the Word of God. I am your sister, Jareen Ivti Kabasan, grade 12 student of Adventist University of the Philippines Academy. And I count this as a special privilege for me to share His goodness and how I know Him as my Savior, Lord, and a special friend. How are you these days, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ? What makes you busy at this point of time when we are experiencing and suffering with pandemic crisis? Do you think it is the best time for us to spend time knowing who Jesus is and His will in our lives? To really know how much we need Him. When someone hugs you, or if one person hugs another person, what does it mean? Or what does it show? Maybe they are close friends? Or they are special to each other? Or it is possible that they have been an enemies that has been reconciled? Right? What do you think a human embrace mean? My brothers and sisters, think of it for a few moments. If it remained unanswered in your mind, I hope and pray that after you watch this video, all of us, all of us could be able to understand what our message, a human embrace, wants us to convey this day. Let's pray. Our dear, kind, heavenly Father, we are so thankful, O God, for this privilege that you have given unto us wherein we could ponder upon your words. I am praying, Lord, for the viewers, O God, may you fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we could be able to understand deeply your good news for us. This I pray in the loving name of Jesus. Amen. As Christians, we know and believe that our God is the forgiving God. Every time we pray, every time we make mistake or commit sins, He's always there to forgive us. Every time we pray, most of the time, if not always, we ask for forgiveness of our sins. It seems forgiveness has just become a usual word for us. Yes, it's true that the Lord our God is merciful and forgiving even though we have rebelled against Him. There is no doubt that God's forgiveness is everlasting. He had forgiven us. He is forgiven us. And He will continue to forgive us as long as we repent. God is a forgiving God. We'll dig deeper on this as we explore our topic entitled 
a human embrace. What are the vital truths mentioned by Paul about God's act of reconciliation? My dear brothers and sisters, if you have your Bible with you, kindly open it with me, and together we will be a witness about God's act of reconciliation. Mga kapatid ko kay Kristo, maaari niyo bang kunin ang inyong Biblia at sabay-sabay natin itong bubaklatin at ating pag-aaralan ang mabuting pabalita sa atin ng ating Panginoon. According to 2 Corinthians 5 verse 18 to 20, there are four vital truths about God's act of reconciliation. First, God has reconciled us to His beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Verse 18, And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to Himself by Jesus Christ and hath given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to Himself by Jesus Christ. Reconciliation was accomplished through a great sacrifice. It took no less than the only Son of God to give His life for us to be reconciled to the Father. He owns everything, but the Father allows His Son to be sacrificed just for you and for me to be reconciled to Him. Even Ellen G. White says that even though you are the only one who committed sin in this planet Earth, God the Father will still send His Son to die for you. To die for you. As soon as there was sin, there was a Savior. As soon as there was sin, there was a Savior. Christ knew that he would have to suffer, yet he becomes man's substitute. As soon as Adam sinned, the Son of God presented himself a surety for human race. With just as much power to avert the doom pronounced upon the guilty when he died upon the cross of Calvary. Do you recognize your worth, fellow young people? Nakikita niyo ba ang inyong kahalagahan, mga kapatid ko kay Kristo? You and me, all of us, are so valuable to God. Let's move on to the second vital truth. Same verse. God has given us the ministry message of reconciliation. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19, And hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. A special ministry was given to us, and that is the ministry of reconciliation. God wants us to, to be an instrument of His grace through the ministry of reconciliation because this special ministry was given to us his special people. I'm gonna ask you, are you willing to offer reconciliation to someone who might have done something wrong to you? To your enemies? Are you willing to offer forgiveness 
and reconcile your broken relationship to them? You may think or say, I'm not God who could offer forgiveness to anyone and, broke, and reconcile a broken relationship to them. I'm just a human. I my capacity to forgive has limitation. Now, let's take a look on the story in the Bible that maybe most of us here could relate and might have changed our thinking about forgiveness and reconciliation. Genesis 45 talks about the story of Joseph. Joseph is a good example of doing this ministry. Remember Joseph? Joseph, who did not do anything wrong nor, nor anything harmful to his brothers, was sold to the Ishmaelite by his own brothers because they are jealous of him. Because they knew that Joseph is the favorite son of their father, Jacob. And because he was sold to the Ishmaelite, he was brought to Egypt. He was brought to Egypt and became slave. Joseph became slave. He experienced being imprisoned and experienced hardship even to the point of losing his life by people who accused him falsely. Yet, yet, he forgave his earring brothers. He forgave his earring brothers. In some way, I can relate with the story of Joseph. I have experienced being hurt, being hurt so much because of people around did and said to me. I even came to the point where I thought if I could still forgive. Because during those times, I felt so down. That experience had a great negative impact to me. I am in so much pain. So I came to the point where I want to end everything i came to the point where i want to end everything but when i heard the good news about god's forgiveness i was i started to realize that i should also learn to forgive like joseph like joseph even though it's hard for me to forgive, hard for me to, for, to forgive when I remember Christ's death on the cross. Because of his death on, cross, on the cross, we were able to be re redeemed by all of our sins. We are redeemed from all of our sins. I kept on being reminded about God's great love for us. And I was so amazed by His grace. I was able to be reconciled to that someone whom I know that hurt me and whom I know that I hurt also through the help 
of the Holy Spirit. We were able to talk and pray for each other. Again, Joseph reminded us that it is not impossible for us to forgive someone who had gone us wrong. Have you experienced being hurt by individuals? Have you forgiven them? Let's go on on the third vital truth. God did not impute their trespasses. Verse 19 to wit, that God who was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. God did not impute our trespasses. Paul is giving the right picture of Father's character. He loves us so much that he wants to cover our sins. Now, let's take a look again. Verse 19. What does it say? That Christ, that God was reconciling the world to himself, in Christ. It is clear that God has first reconciled to us through Christ. Christ's death on the cross reconciled our broken relationship with God. And what's more about the ministry of reconciliation? Let's continue verse 19. Not imputing their trespasses unto them what does it says again not imputing their trespasses unto them what a very merciful and forgiving god he is god's reconciliation to us sinners has no limitations and condition. It doesn't matter how much sins you have done. All of us here, even you, has been reconciled to God through Christ. And the amount, the extent, and the magnitude of our sins do not matter. For God's reconciliation has no condition. It's free. It's for all the people. No matter how sinful we are. Bible commentary says, page 1070, if you are covered with the righteousness of his sin, God the Father will look at us as if we have not committed sin. Justification and pardon are one and the same thing. Through faith, the believer passes from the position of a rebel, a child of sin, and Satan to the position of the loyal subject of Christ Jesus. Not because of inherent goodness, but because Christ received him as his child by adoption. The sinner receives the forgiveness of his sin because his sins were born by his, by his substitute and surety. Thus, Man, pardon and clothed 
with a beautiful garment of price, for righteousness stand, stands faultless before God. Thus, man pardon and clothed with the beautiful garment of Christ, righteousness stand faultless before God. Before God. How do we treat someone who is asking for forgiveness? Do we always bring back the past? Have you really forgiven them? Let's move on to the fourth and last vital truth. God has made us as Him as His ambassadors. Verse 20, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Wow. As though God is beset you by us, we pray in you, Christ dead, be reconciled to God. Now we are ambassadors for Christ. Again, Paul is telling us that we are his ambassadors. Ambassadors is expected to properly represent the king and the kingdom he is working with. He is vested with power and dignity. And ambassadors shows interest of the kingdom to another kingdom. I would like to relate to you the story in the Bible found in the book of John, chapter 4, about the prostitute woman in Samaria, whom God approached and introduced himself as the Savior of the world. He recognized that she was talking to someone who knows everything about her past, who knows everything about her, even though it might be her first time to meet Jesus. When Jesus told her, before you drink the living water, which when you drink, you will not thirst anymore, call your husband. So the woman replied, but I don't have a husband. I don't have a husband. But Jesus replied and said, Yes. Yes, you're right. Because the man whom you are with now is not your husband. He was amazed and concluded that she, he might be the Messiah. So he went home. She went home and called the people in the city. He said, Come, come and see the man whom I met in the well. Come, come and see the man whom I met in the well. He knows everything about my past. He knows everything about me. He might be the Messiah. So the people go and met Jesus, went to meet Jesus. And when they knew about him, who welcomed him, they welcomed him in their city. The prostitute, Samaritan woman become an ambassador of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, young people, that we are all ambassadors of Christ. We may not commit the same thing the Samaritan woman committed, 
But we are so busy in other things. We are busy doing and giving our time into so much, in, into some things. We are into some other things. It may be doing TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, watching Korean dramas, or uh, it can be playing Mobile Legends, and many more. We are called to be His ambassadors, especially at this point when we are experiencing pandemic crisis, when people are victims of fears, worries, stress, and sometimes disagreements. We are called to be His ambassadors for us to tell the peace to everyone to tell the good news to everyone and to make difference in their life. Again, there are four vital truths about God's act of reconciliation. First, God has reconciled us through His Son. Second, God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Third, God did not impute our trespasses. And fourth, God has appointed us to be His ambassadors. Therefore, we are special to God. He gave all for us because He loves us. He gave all for us because He loves us. God wants to assure us that we are forgiven accepted and valued. God freely offered us forgiveness. And more than forgiveness, our broken relationship has been reconciled as well through Jesus Christ. The same thing is God, is what God is expecting to us then he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. To offer forgiveness to someone who might have done something wrong to us. And to reconcile our broken relationship to them as well. Fellow young people, we are called to be His ambassadors, to offer forgiveness and to do the ministry of reconciliation. From now on, may we live as one who was saved by grace. May I call now my friends to sing a song for us? Saved a wretch 
be reconciled with God and reconcile your broken relationship with each other like Joseph and his brothers and to be an ambassadors of Jesus Christ like the Samaritan woman to the people if it is your desire I would like to offer a special prayer let's pray our dear, kind, Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for your grace. This day, we have witnessed your act of reconciliation. And that today, I would like to pray for those people who are listening right now, who wants to be like Joseph and to be this, like the Samaritan woman. Help us, Lord, to invite you 
in our life and to submit fully our life unto you so that we could also be your ambassadors. Thank you so much, Heavenly Father, for you did not impute unto us our trespasses. And thank you so much, Lord, for you have sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross of Calvary so that we could able to experience your grace and love. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.